So, I got something a little special for you guys today. People have been pinging me on my Discord about this, and in the past, I've tried a few of these image to 3D things before, and they're usually not worth the price, but this one was free, so I figured, what the hell. So today, I just wanted to see just how viable is Trellis 3D, from the perspective of a commercial 3D artist. We're just gonna feed it random things and see how it does. So, let's start with something easy. By this point, you guys probably know my personal style is all about that tactical medieval fantasy, so let's just feed it something like a shield. Like a basic historical shield. Let's see how it does. Okay, you know what? That's better than I thought it would be. It would need some fixing, but this is definitely workable. Alright, alright, let, let, let's give it another shield to see how it does. Ooh. Alright. Okay, now I'm kind of wondering, maybe shields are a little bit too easy. Let's do something... Let's do something harder. Let's do something like, uh, I don't know, what do I need? Uh, you know, I need a knight's helmet. Let's go for that. Okay, whoa, whoa, hold the phone, guys. Are we for reals? No way. Okay, let me throw another helmet in here. Damn, bro. This is so cool. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that not only is this better than everything else I've tried, this is also the most affordable one that I've also tried. So it's, okay, let me throw something a little bit more complicated here. My goal is to break this software, so, so let's just, let, let, let's stop holding back. Let's see you digest the whole fucking character, homie. Jesus, really? This is insane. Okay, let's look at the topology, because that's usually the problem with these things. Yeah, okay, yeah. So the topology is definitely got some issues. That's a super easy fix for any professional 3D artist, though. Like, you could fix this easy. It's not main character quality, but if you're just doing a background character, or, or maybe if you're just working as a top-down RPG like League, or maybe a turn-based game like Fire Emblem, where you're only ever going to see the characters from far away, then... This is totally usable. Like, yeah, at this distance, it, it it actually looks pretty good. Okay, okay, let me give it some more shit. I'm, I'm really curious now. When does this actually start to fall apart? Actually, you know what? I think I know it'll break it. Women. These kinds of things almost always start to fall apart as soon as you throw a woman into the equation. Men are really easy to make, but women have lots of beautiful details that if you get wrong, look really weird. So let's dump a beautiful female design into this and see what it does. Yeah, okay, we found the limits. The limitation of this software is women. But again, if you're just making a top-down game where the camera's gonna be far away, then this would actually look fine. In fact, most of the characters in my favorite DS games like Metroid Hunters were kinda like this quality anyway, so yeah, this is usable for sure. So now that we know it's not really good at the, you know, specific details, I have a feeling it would be pretty good at just more abstract male characters that are wearing armor. So I'm going to feed it some of my old abstract character designs that I've had plans to turn into 3D characters, but just never had the time to do it. So let's just throw in this one. Damn, look at that. Damn. You know, I've had this character on my backlog for about five years now. I've, I've personally never seen it in the 3D form before, so... I can't even believe this. Uh, I, okay, I gotta throw in some more characters now. Let, let, let me see some other ones. Let me throw in this one. Damn. Okay, honestly, the fact that it's this good right now means that six months from now, it's gonna be even better. We are definitely gonna be able to start drafting 3D models from 2D images very soon. Okay, so that's all cool, but let's actually put the theory to the test. Let's let's try to actually use one of these models practically and, and just see how much work would it take and how difficult is it. So from the test that I've done, I think if I was to use the software for reals, like on a job or something or for a client, whole characters are probably not a good idea, but I could definitely see myself using this for like small pieces of a character, like armor, weapons, or maybe like helmets and stuff. So let's just say that I wanted a German frog helmet because that's actually my favorite medieval helmet. And if we feed it in, it'll give us this 3D model. So from here, we just download it. We take it into ZBrush and I just want to make some small adjustments to the proportions, you know, maybe some smoothing stuff out, make things thinner here and wider there and just kind of straighten a few of the features. Okay, like we said before, the topology is ass, but also, like I said before, it's a pretty easy fix. We just press this button to Z remesh. Bam, the topology is, well, I won't say fixed, but it is definitely usable. And now we send it to the texture team. Now the texture guy just asked me, what are we doing here? And I just told him, you have 30 minutes to just have fun and make it look cool. 
And so what you're seeing on the screen right now is actually him working. So while you guys are watching him work, I will talk about my closing thoughts here as to what do I think about the software now that I've tested it. Honestly, I'm impressed. Like just being able to draft a 3D object from an image like this, I mean, I think this means that probably the most important step in the workflow production going into the future is gonna be the initial 2D art of the character. So the concept art guys are gonna be a lot more important because if you can just generate the model from the image, that makes the initial image basically the most valuable part of the character. And if you are a 3D artist, then man, weapons, shoes, armor, maybe even low poly hair, I didn't even try things like plants or trees or whatever, but probably I would imagine furniture too. Those kind of things just got way easier to prepare and create. I think the general workflow is going to be something like 3D image, drafted 3D model, retopologized model, substance painter, and then probably just export straight to Unreal from there. It looks like we got it done, so let's just try that right now. Just drag our model in and apply the textures and the materials and look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, we got this from a 2D image in less than an hour of total clean. If you're a new indie dev, I cannot even describe to you just how much time this is going to save. Like when I was making my first game in 3D in Unity, I probably spent a minimum of three and a half years doing nothing but just making 3D models. And you know, because I was new and I didn't know what I was doing at the time, my models didn't even look that good after those three years. But now you guys can have better looking stuff than I could in less than 1% of the time. Like if I was making my first game again and I had this software, I bet you I could have cut the dev time from seven years to probably two years because the 3D asset creation was the hardest part. So this is going to be cool. If you're a new dev, seriously, what a time to be alive. I'm really excited to see where this goes and I'll keep you posted as I learn new stuff. And if you guys find anything else that you want me to try or test out, just drop it in the Discord chat and I'll check it out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.